Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Soul Flower Show. I'm Deborah Prinzing, and I'm so delighted today to welcome two guests who I've been collaborating with for um, a little over a year on a special new episode of Follow the Bloom, a show hosted by Katie Lila, our first guest, and produced by Monica Michelle of Bloom TV Network, our second guest. Hi, ladies. Hi. Good morning. It's great. It's so great to do this. And we've been waiting for the time to um, debut the story of Fall of the Bloom because there's a special episode uh, that was they filmed at the Soulflower Summit last summer. So uh, first of all, I want to start with Monica welcoming you to finally to the episode. We've been talking about doing this for a yeah, while. Thank you. Yeah. Well, so we met virtually and then in person over the last couple of years. Uh, can you talk a little mm -hmm. bit about what is the Bloom TV Network? You're the founder and CEO of this. I got this off of an email I was I was copied on a startup to bring floral into the world of the streaming platform. Is that still a fair way to describe <laughs> what Bloom TV is? Yeah, I would say our tagline is that we are a streaming network for all things floral. Wonderful. Um, yes. <laughs> and beyond. We'll hear and about beyond. that. Yeah. Um, but let's talk a little bit about what your vision was and how you got this started. Uh, a really impressive kind of um, little engine that could really, when you got started, I, I couldn't really envision what it's become. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, just to give everybody kind of a brief background on where I was and before we started Bloom TV, um, I had a, I accidentally started a vegan floral confectionery. Um, I was in marketing a long time ago and I decided when I got time on the side for my girlfriends, I wanted to start making floral inspired desserts just for fun. And my very first client was the Oscars. And so I went from zero to 100 and put everything that I made into all the dressing rooms of the Oscars in 2018. And, uh, from there I went full blown into the baking world and uh, as flowers as an inspiration. Um, and, and vegan is kind of interesting. How, what yeah. does that mean? Like you didn't use eggs or, or butter? Just curious. No animal products, which okay. let me tell you is not the easiest when you're baking cakes because you can't use eggs, you can't use butter. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of restrictions there. Wow. Um, but but I thought it, it was really, I made it work. And part of the reason we did it vegan was because I had, um, oh my gosh, there's, there's so many great projects out here in Colorado, but I fell in love with the Colorado wolf. Uh, sanctuary. And I wanted to donate part of my proceeds into that foundation. And so I was like, okay, well, if I'm donating towards these animal causes, I want everything to be vegan. Um, and so I had to learn how to bake everything vegan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So that was your foray into something floral. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, that was the, you know, dipping my toes in the world of floral. But while I was in that industry, I soon realized that, um, you know, I actually, although I love to bake, I don't want to to be in that industry, but I wanted to take those clients that we had been working with and bring them to a digital space. So I started looking at, well, maybe I can start teaching people how I made these floral inspired desserts. But then I was like, well, if we're going to do that, maybe we should teach them the health benefits of eating edible flowers. And then a light bulb went off and it was like, there's an HGTV, there's a food network, but there's no network for florals. And that's how I got started. That's <laughs> amazing. Good for you. I know it's so ambitious. Um, so you, when did you actually, I mean, you kind of had a soft launch for, I remember. And now mm -hmm. if people go to Bloom TV um, and we'll share the net, the link to all of the things we talk about in our show notes at slowflowerspodcast.com. But if we go, you've had like, many uh, updates and and redesigns and yes. um, it's very user friendly and very compelling visually. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Now it was definitely a journey to get there. We went through multiple different platforms um, and finally landed on this one and we just really, really love it. Um, but yeah, it was a big, uh, I think 2021, January of 2021 was when we did our first launch of the website. Um, yeah. and I think and we, we, we connected right after that when you were right. coming to yeah. Seattle. So now, um, Bloom TV has like, describe how many, you know, what, I'm going to pop it up while we're talking that way we can, yeah. uh, well, Monica, I'm going to pop up, um, Bloom TV on the screen, just so you can talk a little bit about it. And if you want to tell me how to navigate, um, while yeah. we're looking at that, this is the current homepage okay. and, yeah. um, at the top is watch now community and become a creator, which we can talk about. And then 
Uh, what is this Join Bloom TV tab? Uh, so that just takes you to the page where you can sign up for either a monthly membership, which right now we have a special going where you can get the first 30 days for free, which is awesome. So you can get in there and watch Katie's uh, series and everything else that we have on Bloom. Um, and then we also have an annual membership. Okay, great. And then um, just going back to the, um, the actual page, I want to go to the maybe the the menu where do mm -hmm. pe people can see all the different programs that you have oh here they are so these are yes. some of the ones you're featuring this month but how many different what is your content how is it organized is it only by shows now or are there people who are like posting short content as well uh so there we have two different forms of content on our site we have pilot submissions and what we consider uh, or three different types pilot submissions uh, workshops, which are lives, which that's what we have featured at the bottom there are our live workshops. Um, and then also just general tutorials. So that's your standard how to build a bouquet or farm and gardening tips. That's amazing. Wow. Okay. And here's all the Q FAQs here at the top. Well, this is, um, let's just look at uh, uh, just what, uh, what there is here, live interviews with Katie Lila. This is different than the show, right? Yes, correct. So these are all the live interviews that Katie did with each of the guests that were featured on her episodes uh, to kind of dive into the behind the scenes and what went on, bloopers, fun moments, all of that. <laughs> fun. Do you want to add anything, Katie, before we, we uh, click away from this? Uh, it's pretty fun. If you go to watch now, um, the show pops oh, oh, up, right. follow the blooms. And, oh. um, you know, you can if you scroll down, you can see each of the episodes. And oh, even, um, yes. Yeah. So, so then, back to back to getting access. The first episode is available free for anyone to watch. So that's this correct. episode one Bloom's Day. And mm -hmm. then um, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the show that you filmed with, at the summit. But back to your point, mm -hmm. uh, Monica, people could uh, sign up for the 30 day trial and get to see most of these episodes. Yes, correct. Um, and if you go back to the watch now page and you start to kind of scroll down uh, through everything there, we've got um, upcoming live interviews that uh, Katie's going to be doing. Oh, so here's the Slow Flowers one. Okay, great. That's yeah, right. We've got are. three left. <laughs> three left. And what's so cool is that if you join these live, you can obviously like during the live ask questions and it's your opportunity to engage with Katie Lila and any of her guests that she has on. So those are super special for anybody that wants to sign up for those upcoming lives. Um, and then as you scroll down, you can see we've got just tons of different categories on Bloom TV, everything from creator submitted pilots. You can even watch Katie's first submitted pilots which were <laughs> awesome they were i so saw fun. them yeah and um and then yeah everything from edible flowers uh bloom tv produced content uh behind the scenes bloopers outtakes and bonus footage um yeah spectacular floral displays arrangement tutorials i mean it just goes on and on anything flower related you will probably find it on bloom tv somewhere that is amazing so inspiring um Wow, I mean, we're—you probably don't even know how many hours of of uh, footage is here for uh, members to uh, consume, but it looks like a lot. <laughs> it's it, a lot, yeah. Yeah, binging is allowed. <laughs> that's right. Okay, that's I just right. wanted to scroll through here so people get an idea of the categories because I think that's really, um, you know, back, back to your point about uh, having, you know, why isn't there a flower network? You're trying to mm -hmm. dig into every possible related category. Um, you know, from the art and the science and everything in between, uh, health, yes. um, uh, design. Yes. Oh, that's great. It just goes on and on. Wow. It goes okay. on and on. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, even down to staging and photography. So if you're somebody in the floral industry and you need help with staging for your company, um, we've, we try to cover absolutely everything on here. Um, and then also something new to Bloom TV that we just added that's a part of this new site and its features um, is our community page. So if you uh, scroll up to the very top and click on the tab that says community, oh, right uh, here, there, okay. there is now a section within our website that think of it as a Instagram within bloom tv where creators can come in or people in the industry can come in and post about their upcoming events anything to do with flowers tips for our users 
Um, they can connect with our different um, um, Bloom TV creators on here. Um, we just started this, so it's it's not got a ton of content on it yet, but this is a great opportunity for people to not get lost in all the noise that um, Instagram often has, but instead this container of flower focused content um, that we open up to the public and creators in the industry. <laughs> I'm so glad to know about this. I'll tell you, you I think you know why. I, I just could never figure out how to get the Slow Flowers podcast uh, posted to Bloom TV. Maybe this is the way. Yes. When this, when this episode airs, we'll share it so people can watch this interview with both Amazing. of you. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Finally, finally, the, the low tech person might be able to figure out how to participate. <laughs> well, you talk about a submitted uh, pilots or whatever. Is that how the two of you connected? I mean, Monica, Bloom TV. I'm sure that Bloom TV had already started and somehow Katie, mm. you got this idea to submit is to talk a little bit about that, Katie, and we'll bring you in to this conversation. Uh, sure. So um, the where women create magazine has a podcast um, with featured guests. And I was listening to that with Joe Packham and Monica Michelle and um, you know, Joe being one of my superheroes and um, I had just heard of Monica Michelle creating this network for all things floral. And I was like, I have to listen to that one. Right. So came mm -hmm. home from a long nature walk and um, turned it on and was just listening all about the network and hearing um, her take on what she wanted to create and that it was getting going. And they had this call for content um, at the end, you know, like call for submissions, call for content. Um, like if you've and, got an idea, we'll, we'd love to see it kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, also this idea that they're moving into full series. Right. And um, that just felt like liquid lightning in me. Like I, one of those moments where your whole body tingles and just feels like gold is filling you up. Right. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And I, I had been creating these for the first time, um, large scale, big flower um, installations, but that are interactive, that people can move through, photograph with, touch, hold, help create um, and in these smaller studios. And I've been using all local blooms. You know, we just made one with Forsythia, filled the whole studio with Forsythia. And um, the process was so compelling that I thought I want to capture it on film, mm -hmm. right? I want to, mm -hmm. because I went to the, the grower I met them. I heard their story. We cut the flowers. We cut the forsythia. Then we built it out in the studio. Then the photographers came. And the whole thing was so compelling that I was like, ah, I want to do this. I want to capture right. this. But right. then I and thought. You were having it photographed, but you hadn't had it filmed uh, in this process. Right. process hadn't been filmed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to capture the whole process. And I thought this would be the coolest TV show. This would be such a fun Thing to watch, right? How these collaborative things come to play, meeting each of the the um, players in yeah in art, right? Um, so at the time, we should just say your studio is called Flowers for People, and you're in Spokane, Washington, which isn't that far from me. Had yeah. you been like you have a long career in floral? What what had the business been up until that point? It had been everything. <laughs> I, I, like, I like to do all, I'm, I'm very, um, also, yeah. I also, I think a yeah. lot of people can relate to that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It had been everything. So I did, you know, I, I trained under a gal that was, was all things floral studio, um, did my own wedding company for a long time, loved it. But then honestly, I got bored because you do a lot of the mm -hmm. same weddings um, after, you know, 10 years of weddings. Um, right. And then I started doing hands-on stuff with workshops then I started thinking, maybe I'll grow flowers. Maybe I want to be a grower. So I dabbled in that. And then I was like, that takes way too much patience, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. so then I'd I just rather just be everybody. friends with the growers. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I still grow a little bit, but um, yeah. yeah. So then I met every grower I could. Um, and through all of those um, pivots in my career, I met a lot of people. And yeah. what I discovered was I love connecting people, right? And flowers. So I was like, ooh, it just felt like all the stars were aligning. I'm creating this big stuff. I know all of the creators and artists and community gatherers. And why don't I tell their story with this 
new mm. series. Katie, I love the um, the tagline on the Flowers for People website. I seek and gather flowers and people of the vibrant variety with stories to tell. So that's sort of um, teeing up the Follow the Bloom series because you're telling the story of the flowers, but also engaging people and um, hearing about what what excites and motivates them. Um, so I want to show a little sizzle reel of, of the show, but let's talk first about how, how did you actually pull this off? Like you had to pull a team together and film a, a submission to send to Bloom TV. And I think there were, there were like three episodes that you submitted or, or that ran uh, last year. Yeah, I would like to clarify. We usually say one pilot submission and Katie went all out and did three and we're like, Oh my gosh. And they were all great. <laughs> Monica, she wanted your attention. I love it. <laughs> well, well, Monica, what was the criteria? Did you have like a five minute or 10 minute or what did, what did you ask for? Well, so usually for a pilot submission, we want that. Oh, and what a pilot is just to clarify is a single episode of what would be the first episode of the first season. So giving us an idea of what that show would look like, feel like, how it would flow. Um, and we typically ask for that to be the standard 15 to 30 minutes in length okay. uh, for a pilot. Okay. Okay. So Katie, back to you. Like, obviously, you know how to put on events. So you have an organ organized brain. So you obviously, like, did you storyboard this out? Or how did you, uh, did you talk a videographer into following you around? How did this all come together? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I had three events booked already that I was planning, right, that weren't going to be filmed. But I thought, what an amazing opportunity to make these episodes, Yeah. right? And um, I, I reached out to everyone in my community at um, film schools, right? Because I was like, maybe mm. I can wrap, like, wrangle a student into walking around and following me by yeah. right, doing this. Um, and maybe for the, I think some things happen for a reason, right? Um, for some reason, nobody got back to me, like crickets, mm -hmm. right? I sent, mm -hmm. I sent so many emails, so many connections and nothing, nothing came of it. And I was a week out from my first event and I was like, dang it, I don't want to miss this opportunity because you know how much work it is. Um, and so I reached out to my friend who's a professional videographer. His name's Kelly Ditto of Ditto Film Media here in Spokane. And he's way above my caliber, right? But I just said, hey, do you know anyone that would be willing to take on this project? Um, and he was like, what is it? And so I sent him <laughs> um, I sent him my ideas and he was like, let's talk. And so we hashed wow. it out and he said, and I said, my budget is tiny compared to what you've are used, you know, used to um, just trying to get this thing off the ground. And he said, you know what? Content is king. I love the idea. Let's make it. You try me on, I'll try you on. And if it's a good fit, then, um, you know, for that budget, um, I can do this. And I said, well, I have these other three. Would you be willing to, you know, do it? So we just made a contract. Let's try oh, it for three. Episodes. And he, and I mean, without him, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have happened. Right. Because he knew what he was doing. Yeah. And it they, they, those are available to watch on Bloom TV, right, Monica? Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. I, I thought they were um, this, it was very easy to understand what your agenda was, which is let's have a, let's, I don't know, let's throw a big party and with flowers, but let's start with the farmer and move all the way through the design and execution and then the big reveal. And I think mm. that is so, um, you're right your instinct was right is so um, relatable to TV because you're bringing people along on your journey as the, the big idea person, but you're bringing everybody in to the party at the same time. I love how you do that. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So you submitted these three blue Monica away and then the, pro so those have, were aired uh, as part of the deal that like pilots were submitted and, and people get to view it. Then Monica, you had to kind of evaluate what the response was from the members of Bloom TV or the, the viewers. Yeah. So we took, oh gosh, maybe it was almost a year, Katie. Was it a year? Less than? Yeah. Know, about a year. About a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That we took and we started looking at like, what were some of our top performing videos on Bloom TV? What were being watched the most? Um, and then also within our team, kind of looking at like 
you know, what are the great stories that we think could be like really great for our audience? And Katie's was, was right up there. Um, and so then we have the challenge of creating the first full series. And this was also the, um, and, and I want to clarify too, at the beginning, you said I was the producer. I'm not the producer of Fall of the Blooms. <laughs> You're the <We're>, CEO. <laughs> you have producers yeah. working for you, right? <laughs> um, so there's there were several people on the team, but um, so Katie is actually one of the producers of the show because it was her idea and like, uh, you know, bringing that together. Um, and then we have Kelly Ditto that uh, worked as uh, director of photography, right? And then uh, Rhett Cutrell uh juno jacob juno and then jennifer um jordan uh who also served as an executive producer for the show so thank just you. to clarify no, I could thank not you do for that. no and we'll we'll add all the credits in our show notes and i yeah, obviously sure. met jennifer and uh felt a few of the other folks uh when you filmed at the uh the summit so uh yeah. yes uh well, yes, Katie is the producer. She's the host also. And that's <laughs> just really, that's really lovely. Um, so Katie, um, you, you threw these three short episodes out there and just meanwhile, you probably were starting lists of ideas of what other episodes you would do if Bloom TV picked up a whole season. So the season is eight episodes, right? Yeah. Yes. And they are live now. Uh, they're airing one a week on Thursdays. They started March 7th and continue through April 25th. But then they're on they're on the on the website that we just saw, you know, for viewing, as I said, for binging, if you want. What a fun idea to just get a cup of tea and curl up with your laptop and or phone and watch these all back to back. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I have to say, I watched episode two last night. Hmm. The Lilac Festival and the the Spokane Lilac Festival, which is like world renowned, and lo and yeah. behold, another Slow Flowers member uh, showed up yes. on your episode, Laureen McCall of Daisies in May, and I, I emailed her last night and I said, "Hey, I'm going to give you a shout out. Congratulations mm -hmm. for being on uh, Follow the Bloom." And she had she said she had a blast having you come out to her farm and you harvested and got kind of this time last year, probably, right? Got all the uh, yeah, lilacs right. and spring bulbs that you needed for that wonder. Well, maybe a little bit later, I guess lilacs yeah, are May. later. Yeah, May, Yeah, early May. That's so great. Anyway, I love that you, um, she was the farmer that you visited. And um, yeah, she's amazing. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Well, let's look at the, um, the short trailer that um, uh, Bloom TV shared with me. It's just a minute or so, so people can, uh, get a little taste of it, and then we'll we'll talk about what's coming up next. I'm Katie Lila. I make art displays out of fresh cut flowers. Wow, this is looking so fabulous. Flowers really are nature's art, and I love using them as my medium. So fun! Like these little fantasy flower worlds that people can interact with. Oh my gosh, this is stunning. I want this for my bedroom wall. It's hard to be around flowers without smiling. I love looking at something and being like, ooh, how could we make that into something that could be in a flower installation? Ooh, okay, okay. It's hot out here, people, it's hot. A lot of variables, a lot of question marks. Uh, how's it gonna go? How's it gonna play out? Woo, we did it! My install team is amazing. They just jump in action and fill in all the weird requests. So come follow the blooms with us. You never know where the adventure is headed. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so fabulous. Katie, you are so charismatic and so telegenetic. Like, did you realize what a ham you were before, before <laughs> the camera was on you? <laughs> you just have a lot of fun with it. It is a lot of fun. Yeah. I, well, it, the, it happens so fast and the shoots are so fast, right? We get these two day shoots. So I learned really quickly at first I was like, okay, I'll be so fancy and I'll keep it all together. Right. But I don't, it's too fast to be anything but myself yeah. and I'm kind of a dork. <laughs> so it does. So I just was like, you know what? I have to be authentic or this isn't going to fly. So I just had to be like, whoo, whatever yeah. you're crazy yeah. 
but it's so <laughs> it's so joyful. It's so joyful, and it's so. Um, yeah, I think it's it's not intimidating. You know, people feel like, oh, she could be my neighbor. You know, she could be the 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 crazy garden club lady that I know down the street. Like you just have uh, a way of um, I don't know connecting with with me. And when I watch it, I was just like, I want to know her. It's really fun. Um, and you're bringing flowers to people in such an accessible way as well, because um, from a slow flowers point of view, I love that you start with the bloom in the ground and then follow it all the way through. I, I think that that it's a subtle message, but I, I don't know if you've heard from viewers that, that they're learning a little bit more about where flowers are grown and how that's coming together. Yes. Yes. Which is so, I mean, that's one of my big um, hopes for the show is one, make flowers accessible for people in mm -hmm. on a large scale, right? Because um, really curated flower design is expensive and hard to come by, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But two, just educating people, right? That look around you, find your growers. Um, almost everyone can find a flower grower and know right. when stuff is blooming around you, you know, so that you right. are um, showing them the love and support during their abundance. Because as, as you know, um, it's short seasons, right? And it's easy yeah. to miss it if people aren't aware. Hey, here's when Laureen's tulips look amazing, right? So make sure and know that. Like in May, that's when I connect with Laureen and I buy all the tulips, right? And then just well, knowing your- Yeah, I, it's like follow the bloom, but also follow the seasons, which is another mm -hmm. thing that you're very, uh, you know, adhere, you adhere to. Um, so you filmed- eight episodes. Um, last year, you um, and Monica reached out to me and said, can we come film at the Slow Flower Summit? It was completely ex unexpected. What a gift that you brought us by being part of it. All these flower people were already coming together yes. um, for one big party. So I I'm not sure. What was your approach to that? And how did you pull the off this giant paint by flower mural that, that you had at the summit? That's been one brewing in my brain for a long time, right? You know, you get these ideas. Like I said, I'm a night owl. So at 1 a.m., I get these ideas. I jot them down. Um, this collaborative paint by flower, right? Because I love the idea of, and I mean, it was so fun at the summit because as everyone started interacting with this, we had this mural painted by Toby Keo, a muralist um, local here. And then this, um, we drilled holes in it so everybody could take the local flowers from um, Tracy Yang at Jernco Flowers and lots um, of the growers at Seattle Wholesale Market. Um, everybody was picking their flowers and putting them in. Um, you know, I had just put chalk on like, here's the orange flowers, here's the white flowers, here's the pink mm -hmm. flowers. And, um, but as everybody was doing it, they were, their brains were just going crazy with ideas, right? Everyone's like, well, I want to do this and I want to do that. And, oh, I could do this for weddings and I could make, you know, each guest, um, that could be their table setting. They could take a flower in reverse, right? Everyone just had a billion ideas, which was, that's what, that's what I want to do, right? I don't want to protect my designs and be like, I'm the only one that does this. I want everyone to take that idea and explode, right? Wow. I would yeah. love to see that in a thousand different ways, you know? I love it. Yeah, that that's a really good point because it was sort of at first a daunting, like, okay, how are these flowers not going to die? But then of course there were sure. behind the mural were the flower tube, the water tubes that, you know, sure. were part of that installation. It was a hot day. Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, everything, everything ended up being beautiful. And that's the kind of mural you'd have at an event, right? At a wedding or a party, it, it would be a flower wall. But so- right. Active. And it was, you know, it that whole idea of getting your hands on flowers as, you know, back to even when Monica, you were doing floral inspired desserts, like you're touching mm -hmm. something from nature. And it really, mm -hmm. I think, is got this mental health benefit that we we all need. Mm -hmm. um, and you must have, yeah, you, you went nonstop for two whole days, Katie, because you did film, you mentioned both Seattle Wholesale Growers Market, but also Tracy Yang and her, her partner, Nick, at um, John Co. Uh, Farm in Monroe, Washington. So you really were all over the place following those flowers to our event. So, and Tracy was one of our speakers. So that worked out really well. Yeah, Can't wait incredible. to see it. Yes, so it is Did going you know to air. A hip -hop dancer? Did you know Tracy's yes. a hip-hop dancer? Yes. She's Did she crazy. dance for you? 
Oh, yeah. Did, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. That's going to air on April 11th. Okay. And you, of course, you danced with her. What, of course, Katie, that, that would, that would not, <laughs> not surprise me. Um, yeah. So we'll, um, pr we'll make sure we share that when it airs on April 11th. But this is kind of our, our, our run up to get everybody excited about it. And um, just congratulations to both of you on pulling off this first season. Is Follow the Bloom the first full season uh, that Bloom TV is releasing, Monica? Or are there other shows that we it's should the, follow? It's the, first, it's the first full season, yes. Okay. And what else do you have in the works? Oh, my gosh. We've got a million things <laughs> on the line that we know we're going to produce. And it's just... It, I think a lot of really cool things are going to happen over the next few months on, on Bloom TV. Um, we have plans to produce more seasons. We have plans to produce more professional workshops. And we just really want to see the content section grow and eventually become more full seasons than anything else. Like we want to see pilot submissions, but um, our future goal is to have it mostly professionally shot series and workshops. Okay. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. All right. So a little teaser to uh, follow Bloom TV as well. Um, you, we talked a little bit before we started recording about what's happening after at the end of the first eight episode season for, for follow the bloom. Can you talk about your partnership with PBS, Monica? Yeah, sure. So we are partnered with PBS 12, which is the uh, Colorado local PBS station. Uh, we've been working with them for about two years now and have aired uh, various pieces of content. Um, but coming up, we're super excited because Katie's full series is going to air on PBS 12 uh, with the goal of PBS National picking it up. So that's kind of our first uh, our first stop there and hoping we can get Katie in front of uh, more and more people. So we're really excited about that. And that airs in May, just in Colorado. Okay. Um, and then hopefully we can get uh, national to pick it up. Well, our, our, our viewers and listeners in the Denver market can yeah. follow that on channel 12. And I mean, that's, that's, that's right. a great partnership. I think, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I just think public television is so radical and, and, and inspiring and really cares about um, stories and, you know, that mm -hmm. connect people with, you know, humanity. So I'm just thrilled that that they loved Follow the Bloom. Um, and and uh, yes, no, go ahead. Um, yes. As viewers, you essentially help us, right? For everyone that watches the show mm -hmm. on Bloom TV, um, mm -hmm. that's just showing numbers of growth, right? That people want this, that there's there's an audience for it. And that, of course, propels us into a place where um, that makes sense for the bigger, you know, PBS Plus is what they call themselves um, that stream. Oh, so. oh, okay. All right. So, so all that to say, log on to Bloom TV and watch all of the episodes because that's going to help propel Follow the Bloom, hopefully into future seasons. And, you know, right. my analog for that uh, ladies is book publishing. And, you know, every author who's got a book wants people to pre-order and get on Amazon and pre-order the book right. even six months before it's, um, published because that is an in early indicator of what sales will be like. And, you know, mm -hmm. it is, it is commerce. So let's <laughs> Katie and Lila can't, uh, Katie and Monica can't do this, um, magnanimously. This has got to be funded. So, uh, we want to see you succeed and, um, we're delighted to share that story. What are you working on right now, Katie? You're kind of busy until the season's over. I'm, I'm imagining cause you're doing these weekly lives and, uh, just trying to, you know, keep the conversation going. Right. Plus she had a live viewing party last night <laughs> on the, yeah. on the big screen. Oh, tell me about that. Was that in Spokane? Yeah, it was so fun. There's a indie theater, that, um, a vintage theater here called the Magic Lantern. And um, Rhett, the editor of the show, and also amazing producer, creator, has a new snake, a snake documentary. It's called Figures. Okay. So he came up to Spokane. We did a double feature with the Mermaid episode, which came out last week. Um, over I still haven't watched that. I, I'm dying to go back and watch that. Yeah. So You're going to love that one. <laughs> Yeah, so okay. we did Snakes and Mermaids on the big screen. You know, everybody that was involved in Follow the Blooms here in Spokane, which is a lot because there's four episodes yeah. filmed here. Um, 
they came out, you know, family, friends, um, you know, all the people just came out and celebrated and got our popcorn, got to sit back. It was a little big, you know, you first see yourself on, you're like, wow, that's, that's big, you know? <laughs> yeah. I bet you look great at 12, 12 feet tall. <laughs> right. I don't know. I don't know. I'm so creep. I'm so freaked out about snakes. I don't know if I could have attended, but mm. I'm, I'm like the, I like the pairing, the topical pairing yeah. of the mermaids. So that the, 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 yeah. the amphibian creatures all together. Love that. How right. great, and how gratifying. Yeah. It was lovely. Congratulations. Yeah. And that is a great way to keep your community feeling like they're part of it. I saw on your website that you're, you're inviting people to, to let you know if they have a venue or an event that might be a good fit for uh, follow the bloom. So you're kind of, got your feelers out trying to figure out what might um, provide, uh, you know, the, the subject for another episode, right? Yeah, yeah, I would love, um, you know, when we get the green light for season two, um, let me backtrack a little bit. What I've learned over this last season is more than, um, hey, watch what I can do. Look how cool this is. I've loved telling the stories of the different artists and growers mm -hmm. and what they bring to the table. And, you know, you can't capture everything in two days, right? But if we had this opportunity to have submissions from artists, growers, community gatherers, and maybe even they pair up, right? I have this amazing grower that I work with all the time. We have this incredible gathering happening in our community, um, come and feature what they are already doing. Right. Yes, so we pop yes. in, we help them finish it up, but, um, because you know, you can't do something insanely incredible in two days, but if they right. were working on it for months and months, and then we get to highlight their story that, that I feel like is the future of follow the blooms where we we're getting these submissions of people, already doing incredible things together, right? Because people, they love to work. You find your people that you right. love to work with. Right. And then we tell their stories and we, we capture incredible art, but more important, the collaboration, right? Yeah. That, that's the, I think that's the magic, which is different than HGTV where it's always, um, da, 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 boom, look what I did. Right. right. Versus right. let's stop and see what layers bring that art together. That's, that's where, that's where the heart of it is for me now. I really am so glad you talked about that. And I just listening to you, I had a big, uh, my own little chilly body experience thinking, mm -hmm. I'd love to have you come with a show to the Northwest Flower and Garden Festival next February to film the creation of a floral installation, because mm -hmm. those teams, those teams are invested exactly in those partnerships and collaborations you talked about. So that's just to put it out to the universe. We'll see what happens. Yes, yes. We'll, get Monica, we'll get Monica on an airplane uh, to come up from Denver. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm right uh, down. Perfect. Very exciting. Very exciting. Monica, what else is uh, taking up all your time right now? I mean, you just, this is a nonstop endeavor and you've been, you've been, you've been pushing this boulder uh, uphill and really it's taking off now and you're not having to uh, explain to people what you're doing because you've got this body of work that people see and go, oh, okay, I get what she's doing. Well, so on the Bloom TV side, the latest thing is we're running a, uh, we love that we love the earth campaign. So for Earth Day, we're inviting florists to come in and submit a video tutorial on an eco-friendly creation, or maybe even flower growers who have tips for the public on how to grow organically and how to be kind to the planet. So we're currently accepting submissions for that. And we're going to launch that on April 22nd for Earth Day and highlight that through May. So we invite you to come and participate if that's something you feel uh, Oh my gosh, that's so do. exciting. And that is, <laughs> um, yes, if I'm going back to the homepage of Bloom Network bloomtvnetwork.com under become a creator it, the, on the scroll down it says join mm -hmm. our earth day campaign is that yes, the, correct uh, great yes what's, um, the, so what's the deadline for that so we're accepting videos until april 18th we're asking the sooner the better we've got about 10 people so far that uh that we're working with and our goal is to you know anywhere from 30 to 50 we're hoping to 
to bring in and have submissions. So I think that'll be really fun because I'm like, that'll be fantastic education for the public. And we want to highlight that year round anyways. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing. Also, we have a sister network called Made TV. Um, that's same idea behind Bloom TV. It's a niche streaming network where creators submit their ideas. And we launched that in August of this last year. Um, you know, it just so many things going on. I had a baby. So like, I mean, all the things. <laughs> I heard that. Congratulations. <laughs> you know, women just do it. We just get things done and we, we figure it out. It Congratulations. <laughs> Thank of you. course you had a baby. And of course, Kayla, ha Katie has four children. I mean, of course you do all this beauty and creativity and connect people. It's just mm. really heartwarming. I am so grateful to both of you for your support and, you know, talking about feeling that people get what you're doing. I feel like you get what, what we're doing at Soul Flowers. Mm. And I really appreciate all that you've done to support us. Before mm. we wrap up, um, anything else you guys want to add? Um, I, you know, I would for sure just want to say thank you so very much, Deborah, for the work you do. Um, you are an inspiration to me. Uh, when I came back to flower, um, to flowers after a stint of lots of babies, um, I, I was looking around for a fresh way to, to do flowers, right? Um, ironically, flowers can become stagnant if you're not mm -hmm. using um, locally grown flowers, um, because, and, and so I found slow flower society. I found all of these amazing designers growing locally, you know, designing with local flowers and pausing even, which is kind of crazy to think people pause their work for a season to come, yeah. you know? Yeah. Right. And, and that's, in, that was really inspiring to me to think, Oh, that's even possible, you know, to just think of everything in a whole different way. So I love that. Oh, good. I'm so glad. That's great. Mm. We'll, we'll keep doing it. Yeah. All right. Monica, we yeah. cut you off. Were you going to say something or we were no, Well, actually, up? I was going to thank you. And because um, this is really special and I've been I've been dying to, to sit down with you for a while. And yeah, I love what you're doing. I'll just relay what Katie said. Like, I feel the same way. Thank you for all the incredible work you're doing. Well, um, thank you. This is this will not be the only time we we record an episode. <laughs> I am I'm uh, excited to hear about the Earth Day, um, you know, programming that you're doing it's because people who are going to hear this on April third mm -hmm. still have time to maybe film something and submit it. And um, right. you know, you work with people at all levels of uh, on camera skills and. and yeah, and, you know, this could be someone could film uh, on an iPhone. It sounds like, and and oh, absolutely. Okay. The, our only requirement is it needs to be shot horizontally because vertical stuff does not work on our platform. But we invite you to join. We would love to have more people submitting great content, and um, yeah, I love it. Yeah, you... so we stream directly on our site. So just okay. like any other streaming platform, you go to bloomtvnetwork.com and click on the watch tab and you can stream directly there on okay. your computer or your phone. Okay, great. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you both so much. I can't wait to uh, follow the bloom over to the Soulflower Summit in a few weeks. And um, I know that our viewers will be logging in to watch that. So thanks so much. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Always great to see you.